Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT. Originally, it was rational therapy, and then in 1959, it changed to rational emotive therapy, RET, which is what it was known by for a long time. And then finally, in 1992, they changed the terminology to rational emotive behavior therapy, REBT. The founder was Albert Ellis. It's a therapy that's really didactic. That is, it relies on the therapist focusing as the teacher, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's a behavior-oriented approach, and it stresses the action of practice combining irrational and self-indoctrinated ideas and trying to root those out. The philosophy is that um, thinking, evaluating, analyzing, questioning, doing, practicing, and re-deciding are the basis of behavior change. Therapy basically is a process of re-education. So the concepts are that basically people keep telling themselves irrational and illogical thoughts. So the approach is based on the ABC theory. That is, A, the actualizing event, B, the belief system, and C, the consequence. And emotional problems, then, are the result of one's beliefs, and it's the beliefs that need to be challenged and changed. So, the goal of REBT is to eliminate the self-defeating outlook on life and acquire a more rational and tolerant philosophy. So, it's a goal of this cognitive therapy is to change the way you think. And you'll find that that's really the goal of all cognitive therapies that are sort of under this umbrella. So it's our interpretation of events, not the event itself, that really is the problem. It's all about uprooting the shoulds and the musts and the oughts that go on in life. So the therapeutic relationship, as I've alluded to, is that the therapist functions as the teacher, the client as the student. Now within that, you don't need a, uh, a warm, fuzzy relationship, but it does rely on the client feeling unconditional positive regard from the therapist. So the technique comes down to disputing irrational beliefs, doing the cognitive homework that needs to be done, changing one's language, and often uses a sense of humor. A lot of the applications then are that you'll see that it's people uh, applicable to people with uh, modern anxiety disorders, neurotic disorders, uh, psychosomatic problems, eating disorders, poor interpersonal skills, marital problems, uh, addiction, sexual dysfunction, and really it's most effective when the person can reason well because it's all about changing your beliefs. It's all about changing your ideas, grasping the ideas that the, care, that the therapist is telling you and being able to change the way you think. One of the pluses of it is that uh, the counseling is brief. It uh, values practice in getting things done and experimenting with new behavior so that uh, insight the insight that you gain during the therapy sessions is changed into doing. Now, a limitation is that because it's so highly based on the therapist being a teacher, that there's a danger that the belief system of the therapist can get imposed on that of the client. And, well, a client can end up feeling somewhat beat down by the process of uh, an over-eager therapist. Some of the key terms that you need to know, ABC, activating event, belief, consequences, the ABC model, cognitive errors, 
that is uh, misconceptions and faulty assumptions that lead to poor ways of being and doing, cognitive restructuring, the process of actively altering those thought patterns that are causing problems, internal dialogue, that is the sentence that people tell themselves and the debate that goes on inside the person's head that forms that inner speech that can either be defeating or self-defeating. Shame attacking exercises, REBT has the strategy of encouraging people to do things despite the fear and uh, working through those and going beyond them. Those are some of the things you need to know about REBT. Good luck on the test.